In this video, we're looking at how we can create a tool inside Excel to perform monthly variance analysis super fast. So that each month, all we have to do is change the date and click one button and everything updates and we can see our variances. It's gonna save a huge amount of time. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here's the scenario that we're working through. Each month, we receive a payroll file that contains the payroll for everybody in our company. All we want to do is to perform a month by month comparison to find out whether those variances are reasonable. Are they in line with our expectations? And we want this to all update with the single click of a button. So let's go and see how we can build this solution. Here we have a folder that contains the two files that we want to compare. You'll notice that the file names are payroll, then we have the year and the month and the day included in that file name. We want to start by getting this file path into Excel. So I'm going to hold shift, right click, and then select copy as path. Now I can bring this across into Excel. What we want to do is to make this file path dynamic so that when we change the date, our file path for the current month also changes. So let's make that change. We'll start with equals and a double quote. We'll add a double quote to the end. And then rather than the date, what we want to use is the text function. And we want to use that based on our date. And we want to return year with four digits, month with two digits, and day with two digits. So now we can close that text function and that's now based upon our date. We need to do the same thing for our prior month. So we'll paste in that value, but our date now needs to be the prior month date. So we're going to use the EO month function, open bracket, so that's the date, and we want to go backwards one month, so minus one, which means we now have the current month and prior month for our file paths. Let's now create named ranges for these two file paths. The first one I'll call current month, and the second one I will call prior month. We now have our two file paths set up, and we're going to use those in a moment. But the next thing we want to do is to get the data into Power Query. To get the data into Power Query, we're going to go to the data ribbon, then get data from file from Excel workbook. We can then navigate to one of our payroll files. I'm just going to select that file there and then click import. Power Query is now going to give us the navigator window. It's identified that we have a sheet one inside our payroll file. I'm going to select that and then click transform data. Power Query now loads and shows us the data from that workbook. I've got default settings applied, so I do have the change type and promoted header step. I want to delete both of those. Now we want to get our actual header row to be the first row. To do that, I'm gonna to go to remove rows, remove top rows, and we want to remove the first four rows. And then I can click OK. Now we can promote that first row as a header. So from the home ribbon, we have use first row as headers. It's changed our data types, but in this scenario, we're happy with those. We don't need to make any changes. Let's call our query current month. Now, before we do anything else, we want to add our dynamic path so that it picks up the path from our Excel workbook. Here in Notepad, I've got this magic code saved. This is the code that we need in Power Query to connect to a named range. So I'm going to copy that, then back in Power Query, I'll go to View and Advanced Editor. I'm going to paste this at the top of my code underneath the word let. Now my first named range was called current month, so I don't need to change that. But my file path here, I'm going to replace that for my file path that was hard coded into my code. And then I can click Done. So that's now connected to my file, but dynamically through that named range. Now I'm going to duplicate my query, and I'm going to call this prior month. I also need to change my file path so that this is also pointing to my prior month named range. When we commit that, you can see that that is now also connected to a file. Right, we have the data that we want in the layout that we want. Let's click close and load and load this into Excel. And now those queries are loaded into Excel as tables, one for the current month and one for the prior month. 
If you want to save time with Excel, then you should check out our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. That's the place where we teach people like you how to save months of time every year by using Excel the right way, which means you no longer have to work late and you get to spend more time doing what you love. Now from both these tables, I want to create a unique list of employee reference numbers. So to do that, I'm going to use the VStack function. So VStack, opening bracket, and I want to stack from my current month, I want the employee number, and also from the prior month, I want the employee number. So I'll close that and commit that formula. That gives me all of those values stacked together, but we just want one instance of each of those numbers, and we also want them sorted. So let's edit our formula to sort, and also unique, so that now, we have a unique list of reference numbers. Next, all we need to do is to perform a standard sum ifs equals sum ifs. So we want to sum from our current month, let's say we want our gross value, and we want that where the employee number is equal to the value from B16, but we want the spill range, so it will be hash. Then we can close that bracket and commit that formula. So we now know what the current month value is for each employee. Let's do the same for the previous month. Equals sum ifs, open bracket. And from the prior month, we want to sum the gross column where the number is equal to the value in B16 hash. And close that and commit that formula. So we now have our current month and our prior month. Now it's time to calculate our variance. So that's going to equal C16 hash minus D16 hash, and then we can commit that. And we now have a list of all of those variances. Let's just get a sum to see what our numbers display. So equals sum, and we want to sum C16 hash. We can commit that, and now let's copy our formula. So we can see what our current month and prior month were, but also what the variance is between those two data sets. We've got 740 employees in our list and the majority of them don't have any variance at all. We just want to see those that do. So how can we do that? Well, we're going to use the filter function equals filter, open bracket, and we want to filter our list of employee numbers. We want to include only those where our variance does not equal zero. And we can close that bracket. We just want to F4, E16, because we're going to copy this formula across shortly. So that gives us our list of numbers. We can then also copy across our current, previous, and variances. Let's just change our formatting back. And there we go, we now have a list of all of our variances and which employee they relate to. Let's copy our summary formula as well. So equals sum, and we want to sum the value in H16 hash. And again, we can now perform this on our other columns too. So there we go, we have our list of variances by each employee. Now what happens in the following month? Because we don't want to have to go through these steps every single month. Well, the good news is we don't need to. All we have to do is save our payroll file into that same folder. We then come back, we can change the date to the 30th of October, 2024. And then all we have to click is data, refresh all. Now everything's gonna calculate and update, and we can now see that we've got our variances. How quick was that? So we've got a variance of 3,308 between September and October. Now, what if we want to do exactly the same thing for November? Well, that's simple. We simply save the file in the folder again. We come back to Excel, we change the date to the 30th of November, 2024. We click data, refresh all, and that's it. Excel now calculates through and we now get our latest variances. And that's it. In just a few minutes, we've built a tool that can save us a huge amount of time because it performs that variance analysis between two different files. And then we can decide, is that in line with our expectations? Do we need to do anything with these numbers? Do we need to investigate further? But we're not wasting any time in cleaning any data or copying and pasting data into Excel. If you like this video, why not subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And once you've done that, click there. That's the next awesome Excel video that you want to watch. 
Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.